I'll show you how a sky replacement can be done while preserving fine grain detail in Affinity Photo. I'm using Affinity Photo 2.3. The approach I'll show here should be used in situations when regular selection tools like the Flood Select tool and the Selection Brush fall short. It's always preferable to use those if you can. For this photo, the Flood Select tool isn't up to the task. It misses the finer details of the tree, that's to say the spruce needles. I'd like to preserve them as much as possible. My approach will produce superior results in that regard at the cost of a little more toil and trouble, but I think it's worth it. The basic strategy will be to select the sky, bring in the new sky photo, and then apply a mask to it. I'll begin by duplicating the background image layer. Holding down the command key, control key in Windows, I'll tap the J key. This is just a temporary copy for creating a selection of the sky. Now I'll add a brightness and contrast adjustment. I'm aiming to maximize contrast between the sky and the rest of the photo to help Affinity make as precise a selection as possible. To that end, I'll push contrast way up. and I'll lower brightness as well. I'll zoom in to get a close look at the spruce needles that are up against the sky. I don't want it to be too dark, as that will reduce contrast, resulting in a less precise selection, meaning loss of fine grain detail, which is what I'm trying to preserve. I think that'll do. You can use other adjustments instead if you like. You can use levels, for example, or even more than one adjustment. You might convert to black and white first, and then use levels, or brightness and contrast, or both. Whatever works best to maximize contrast in your image. I'll click the Merge button to merge the adjustment into the copy of the background image layer. This is to ensure Affinity is using my contrast adjustments when making a selection. It may use them anyway, but at least this way I know for sure that it will. I'll zoom back out by pressing Command-0, Control-0 on Windows. It looks bad, but again, this is for creating a selection only. Once that's done, I'll discard this layer. To make the selection, I'll choose Select Sampled Color from the Select menu. Next, I'll click on the sky with my mouse to tell Affinity to select everything of that color. If the selection doesn't look good after the first click, you can continue to click in different areas to see if you get better results. This looks fine. The marching ants are all around the spruce tree and gable, but there's a problem with the area on the lower right. I'll use the tolerance slider in the dialog to refine the selection somewhat. I'll slowly move it a tiny bit to the right. Increasing tolerance tells Affinity to select a broader range of hues. In this case, a broader range of hues of blue. I'm going to zoom in to get a closer look. There's some sparkling going on there. The sparkles represent unselected areas. I'll use the tolerance slider to clean this up as much as possible. I'll move the slider just a tiny bit more to the right. That cleaned things up quite well. I'll pan over to the spruce needles to get a closer look at them. The marching ants are on the outer edge of the needles, which means they're entirely or almost entirely selected. If I move the tolerance slider too far to the right, you'll see that the selection will move further into the tree. This will result in detail loss, as the outer parts of the needles will be replaced by the new sky. I'll move the slider back to the left to ensure I'm getting all of the individual spruce needles. Since I adjusted the tolerance slider, I'll pan back over to the right again to see how that area looks. I'll move the slider a tiny bit more to the right to bring the marching ants closer to the top edge of the snow. I'll check the spruce needles again. There's enough detail there, so I'll click the Apply button on the dialog. I'll zoom back out. 
Now I'll clean up the selection. From the Select menu, I'll choose Edit Selection as Layer. Unselected areas are shaded in red. To clean this up, I'll use the Paintbrush tool. It's very important that the Paintbrush tool's blend mode be set to Overlay. You do that up here on the Context toolbar. I'll explain why in a second. Next, I'll make sure Hardness is 0% and Flow and Opacity are at 100%. I'll set the brush color to white. Because the brush's blend mode is Overlay, the white brush will only affect selected areas, leaving red or unselected areas untouched. I'll use it to clean up the sky, removing as many of the tiny unselected areas as possible. In other words, improving the selection. Because I created the selection based on a sampled color, the entire sky is not selected, only certain hues. Although it doesn't look like it, the sky in this photo is made up of multiple hues. I'll start by painting over the area on the lower right where the sky meets the snow-covered rooftop. You may not be able to see it, but the sky is becoming a brighter blue. That means more of the sky is being selected. I want to select as much as possible to get the best possible mask. Unselected areas, that's to say gray or black areas on the mask, may show up as noise or even look like dirt once the sky is replaced. A word of caution. Do not use any of the selection tools to clean up your sky selection. If you do, you'll end up with a mask that looks like this. And this sharp line dividing fully selected areas from partially selected ones will show up in your photo. I'm going to reduce the flow and opacity of the brush now that I'm getting closer to the tree. To preserve tree detail, I'm not going to clean up the selection as much in the areas around it. Lowering opacity and flow will reduce contrast with the rest of the sky where I painted with full flow and opacity, but I don't think it will be an issue with this photo in any case. I'm not brushing on the tips of the needles. They're partially selected, and painting on them with a white brush will select them more, which again will result in detail loss. And by the same token, I won't be painting on them with a black brush either. If I do, they'll retain a halo of the old sky once the new one is put in place. Now I'll change the brush color to black to paint over the rest of the photo to make sure everything is unselected in those areas. I'll turn the flow and opacity back up to 100%. Okay, I think I'm good. After I apply a mask, I can always do some more cleanup if necessary. I'll click on any layer to bring back the marching ants and restore normal view. I no longer need the extra background layer, so I'll delete it. Now I'm ready to bring in the new sky. First I'll zoom out so I have more room to work. From the File menu, I'll select Place to select the new sky photo. Now I can click anywhere to place the file. I'll use the blue rectangle to move and resize it into place. I'll get back to the normal view. I'm using the marching ants as a guide to help me position the sky. That looks good, so I'll go ahead and apply a mask. I'll clear the selection by pressing Command-D or Control-D in Windows. 
I'll zoom in and have a closer look at the spruce needles. That is incredible. Amazing detail. Can one even tell the sky's been replaced? Absolutely great. I'll pan around to check the edges of the roof. That is almost perfect. Impressive indeed. I may be able to make this even better. I'll pan back over to the spruce needles. I'll try to give the needles more body. I'll add a levels adjustment. I'll expand the sky image layer and drag the levels adjustment over the image layer until just the image layer's thumbnail is highlighted and then release it. The levels adjustment should be placed above the mask layer. I'll select the alpha channel. What I'll do now is move the black level slider to the right. This will cause the black painted part of the mask, which represents the unselected area, to expand ever so slightly. This should reveal more of the spruce needles, giving them a fuller appearance. Do you see that? Conversely, moving the white level slider to the left will cause the selected area to expand, which will hide more of the spruce needles. You can use this technique to make adjustments to the edges of your selection. I'll pan around to make sure I didn't introduce any undesirable effects elsewhere. I'm just going around the edges in contact with the sky. That's where the edge of the selection is, the dividing line between selected and unselected areas, or white and black on the mask. I noticed some areas need fixing. I'll select the mask and use a black brush to patch things up. I'll zoom back out. I'll add a brightness and contrast adjustment to the sky. I'll drag it over to Sky Image Layer until the entire layer is highlighted and release it. It doesn't really matter if it's above or below the mask. I'll just make a slight adjustment. To reposition the sky, just select its layer and then select the Move tool. But be sure Lock Children on the Context Toolbar is checked. If it's not checked, the mask will move along with the sky. I'll press Command Z, Control Z in Windows to undo that. If I now place a check mark in Lock Children, I can reposition the sky and the mask will stay put. To make adjustments to the rest of the photo, place the adjustments below the sky image layer. Or make them a child of the background image layer. Making them a child keeps things more organized. So that's a pretty amazing sky replacement. Of course, not all photos are good candidates. Some will look bad no matter how much work you put into them. Thank you for watching.